All right, guys, today we are going to check out the Fortin Meshuggah Blackout. Let's get started. Well, thanks for joining me for today's video. I really appreciate it. And my friend Jason is off camera, but he'll be uh, hanging out with me while we're doing this uh, video and he'll be interjecting here and there because this is his amp after all and he knows a hell of a lot more about it than I do. This is literally like my first time ever even touching this thing. Um, and I'm gonna do a first impressions video and a dial in. And so Jason's gonna be kind of interjecting and just telling us uh, about the amplifier uh, when I have questions or maybe even when I stick my foot in my mouth. Uh, so we'll <laughs> see here. <laughs> so basically um, I'm starting out on the low input and uh, that's more of like uh, what you said, the plexi uh, channel, right? Like a lower gain plexi kind of thing? Super hot rotted lower gain. Okay, super yeah. hot rotted lower gain. And then up here on the high, that's what? Extra hot rotted more gain. Okay, like absolutely ridiculous, balls out, yeah. freaking craziness. Okay. Yeah, if you crank them all the way up, it is, yeah. All right. Well, I'm all about that. So, And then we'll be trying it out with some overdrive pedals and... Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's get started with uh, the low input right now and just see what we have. Okay, so that is the low gain channel. Now, as I understand, when you pull this knob out, the master knob out, you get more gain. So let's see how that is. And uh, any suggestions on how I'm dialing this thing in? Uh, I mean, for standard tuning, I would say roll the bass up to maybe nine o'clock. Okay. Put right. the mids right up the middle. Oh, to nine o'clock. Yeah. So roll it back. Okay. Excuse so, me, on nine. I'm, oh, oh yeah. on nine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bass on nine. Okay. Mids in the middle, right up the middle. Okay. Treble it like six. Okay. And the presence you can probably put somewhere around six, seven. Okay. Is and then six? crank crank the gain all the way yep. and pull the master volume out. Should get you somewhere pretty like early 80s hard rock and then you can hit it with a boost okay let's give that a try so i'll pull out the uh master and get some more gain and then uh see how that sounds okay i got her cranked all the way up too is that all right Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So I got this thing at full tilt. And when you pull out the gain, you're going to lose a little bit of volume because you're going to get some compression, you know, when you pull out the master, I should say. So let's go ahead and engage the boost. Let's do the odd box uh, just for giggles here. So when you see me reach down, I'm pushing the odd box switch and engaging that.
Yep, definitely has the plexi thing going on. It's a, it's a hot rotted kind of plexi. Um, now I'm not getting like a ton of gain, you know, so, but it's, it's, it's got some crunchy, you know, stuff going on there. Um, and I'm pushing it with the odd box, which definitely kind of filled it up a little bit, which the odd box is really good at doing. And I have the odd box in UK mode, so I'm pushing it pretty hard with that. Um, I'm going to try putting a little bit of drive in the pedal too, just to see if I can get a little more grit out of the amp, you know. Um, sounds good, but I want a little bit more, so let's see what we can get. Because I got the gain freaking cranked and pushed out and uh, or pulled out or whatever you want to call it. So let's just see what we have when I add a little gain from the pedal. <laughs> All right, notice that it's a little bright, so let me let me tame it a little bit here. Yeah, man, uh, definitely it gets brighter. Um, and I don't think it was just the pedal because I got the pedal like, you know, the tone is dead nut center. But there's some brightness going on with uh, the extra gain and stuff. But it's actually pretty cool. Like I'm, I'm definitely getting some uh, 80s stuff going on here. And uh, yeah, it's actually pretty freaking cool. Let me do some more riffs. Any other suggestions that you have uh, in here? So I got the presence at four. I got the bass cranked up to nine. The mids are, I put them at six. I brought the treble back a little bit and gains cranked on, you know, I don't know what else, how much more I can do with the settings. I mean, I don't want to make it any brighter. That's kind of how I would run it too. It's very, it's very similar to the Jakey Lee Plexi type of sound, I would say. You okay. know, I had one of those at the house for a while. Gotcha. Uh, I don't play this channel very much, but it's cool to show it off. Yeah, it's, it's cool. We're getting, we're just getting started here. So let me do some, well, speaking of Jakey Lee, let me do some Bark at the Moon. Right see if we have. <laughs> Yeah, definitely has that vibe. Um, could be a little thicker. Let me adjust the bass a little bit and see what we have. Pull some presence out of it, maybe? Yeah, I was, I was going to say pull some presence out, too. Yeah, it's a little, still a little bright. So, yeah, let's see if we can thicken it up a little bit more. I might even add some mids, too. And Keep bring... in mind, this is geared for guys playing an F standard on an 8-string guitar. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, I have a low, lower tune guitar upstairs. We'll definitely introduce that. In a, in a few here so yeah that's that's definitely something to keep in mind and that's why i mean it was made for the sugar you know so uh you know they they use all that drop z tuning and stuff so i yeah i totally get it all right let's see what we have <laughs>
Yeah, definitely has, let me turn this fan off here. Yeah, definitely has uh, that vibe. It really does. Um, especially if you push a little bit of gain on the pedal. So I only have the pedal at like nine o'clock on the drive uh, knob. So it's not really putting a lot in there, but it, it, it sounds great with that. Like for, the, for that vibe, for the 80s stuff, I mean, this thing really does do it uh, very well. Pretty cool so far. So now let's go ahead and uh, engage the, uh, the high gain part. This is where the fun, in my opinion, really, really begins. This is more of my vibe. So let's see what we have. All right, so I'm gonna set everything uh, kind of back to, well, I'll keep the EQ the same. Maybe I'll bring the bass down a little bit. And uh, I have the gain, because these gains cascade into each other in this setting. So uh, I'll set these at noon and just dial it in from here and see what we have. The pedal is, you know what, I'll, I'll turn the pedal off. And just so you know, when I do engage the pedal, the drive is all the way down. So the pedal's off right now, so here we go. All right, so what I'm finding is in this and the high setting, if you put too much uh, of gain one in there or gain two, yeah, gain two, uh, it, it can get a little muddy, but you want more of gain one that ends up kind of giving it that really nice crisp attack and stuff like that. But if you balance these out right, you can really get some good, uh, you know, gain structure going on here. I mean, what are, you, what are your settings that you, you use? Uh, when I'm playing in standard tuning, I'll probably have the the lower frequency gain set somewhere around seven, and the higher frequency gain pointing like straight to the right at three o'clock. Okay, let's try that, and then I'll screw around with it from there, and then uh, I'll engage the boost as well. So let's see what we have. <laughs> Yeah, when I cranked the gain like right here on uh, gain one, that last little bit really makes a difference. Huge difference. All of a sudden it just comes in and you're like, oh, there it is. That's at least for me, that's what works, just having it cranked all the way up. And then this kind of adds that thicker type of gain structure to it. Um, let me mess around with these knobs just a little bit more and then we'll engage the boost pedal. <laughs>
All right, so for me, I like I like it like this. I have uh, gain one cranked and then gain two at three o'clock, and that kind of adds that little bit of flubbiness, but it's not bad. It's like it's just a little fuller and meatier, but it, it's not like terribly flubby. It's still pretty tight, um, and I I can tell already as soon as I engage the boost, this thing's gonna get, go freaking nuts. So. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to engage the odd box again. Settings on the odd box is, uh, let's see, what do I have here? Uh, UK mode, volume all the way up, drive all the way down, tone dead nut center. So let's see what we have. <laughs> Okay, so you know what I forgot to do is pull out the uh, the master and see if we, you know, now we can really feather in the gain. So let's turn the overdrive off and do that and see how it sounds, and then we'll re-engage the pedal and see what we have then. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a volume jump when you push that back in, isn't there? <laughs> okay, so you definitely get, a, it's probably another gain stage, I would assume, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. seems like another gain stage when you do that. So that's kind of cool. So now with that engaged and dialed in a little differently, let me engage the boost and uh, probably have to dial in and further from there. And then after that, I'll try a couple different boost pedals. Uh, Jason was kind enough to bring over his Fortin 33, so we'll try that with it along with uh, the mud killer as well. So we'll start with the odd box first and then uh, move on to the other pedals after that. <laughs> Okay, that sounds pretty damn good. Yeah, it really does. Uh, feels great too. You know, lots of good gain, and um, it's definitely unique. Though I don't, I don't think I've ever played an amp like this because it's even though I have the gain cranked, it's not overly gained. There's still a lot of clarity there, and it's not mushy. You know, so yeah, it's interesting. Really, really different. <laughs> I've seriously, I've never played anything like this before. It's very unique, yeah. Yeah, very unique. I'm still trying to get to know the feel and like you know how to how it responds to my playing and stuff. But yeah, really interesting. So 
let's try the 33. Now I have the knob at top dead center. I got some recommendations for you. Okay. The 33, <clears throat> I think you're not gonna like it. It's gonna filter a lot of the thickness out. Okay. All right, so if, if I was running it, especially I'd be probably grabbing a detune guitar, but for now I would take the presence, turn it off okay. completely. All right. And Crank I would- the bass? I would put the bass at six. That's it, okay. And then I'd put the mids and the treble at four. Okay. Mids at four, treble at four. I usually run the the uh, low frequency gain rate at three o'clock. Yep, that's where it's at. And then I dial the high frequency gain back to maybe like at six. Okay. Start there, you may want to add more. Okay. And then the 33, you may find that you like it left of center. That pedal adds like 20 decibels of gain or something okay. crazy when cranked. So okay. just, you know, you know, season the taste. <laughs> All right, so here we go. <laughs> Let's see what we have. So the pedal's off. When you see me reach down, that means I'm turning it on. Yeah, wow, that's really, it almost sounds like it's, it's starving for air. So let me, I'm going to grab my lower tune guitar and see if that helps things out. <clears throat> because this is, uh, you know, when I, as soon as I added more gain and more bass, then it filled up a little bit more, but it's a little like cocked wah, kind of starving for air sounding for me. now. It's very metallic sounding. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now, I should point out I'm using active pickups too, so maybe it's hitting the amp a little harder. That's why my yeah. settings are dialed back a little more. Okay, that's good to know because these are definitely not active. Right. So let me... Uh, I'm gonna switch guitars here and uh, we'll see what we have after I do that. All right, this guitar is tuned to C-sharp standard and it's a six string. So let's see what this sounds like with uh, the Meshuga. I'm gonna re-engage the uh, Fortin 33 and uh, I'm just gonna dial in both the pedal and the amp and try to get the best sound I can get out of it, at least for my taste. And uh, if I gotta switch pedals, I'll do that. So far, I'm not digging the 33 <laughs> with this amplifier at all, but we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this pedal is not working for me at all with this amp. <laughs> oh, that is just god awful. Um, let's go with uh, the Mud Killer and see what we have with that one. Yeah, the, the 33, that's, if you ask me, this amp's too tight for the 33. Yep. I think um, the 33 is for big, fat, gooey, like dual racks and yep. muddy amps like that. With this amp, it's just, oh, it's like, too much yeah you gotta really yeah. you gotta dial the amp for the pedal to the point of where it does, you don't need the pedal right y yeah yeah. Pretty. <laughs> yeah yeah and at that point you're just gonna turn it off and go yeah that sounds better without it and yeah. at this juncture sounds way better without it so uh my apologies to you guys' ears out there but i figured i'd uh, give this thing a go um let's go with the mud killer and see what we have <laughs> All 
All right, that's definitely better. So let's continue dialing in the amplifier now and see if I can get the best tone I can out of it. Um, you know what's weird is, uh, again, these are first impressions. I have never touched this amplifier before, but I noticed that there's there's a bit of an active thing going on with the treble. It seems like it, the volume changes and there's this different kind of shaping that goes on than what I'm used to with the treble knobs. I mean, did you notice that when I turned it different directions I was getting different volume levels and it was kind of interesting so yeah this is uh <laughs> this has definitely been a fun experiment so let me uh, mess around with it a little bit more <laughs> You hear that? How yeah. it went up when I turned the treble down? Yeah. That's freaking weird. <laughs> Anyways, well, let's go. I definitely like it better with the uh, the mud killer, but it seems like it needs more fullness. Could I talk you into trying my cheesy forty dollar boss pedal? Yeah, man, let's give that a try because I think that might be the ticket for this thing, right? I was shocked at how good it sounds through this. All right, game. let's do it. So uh, the super overdrive, let's give that a try. Let me plug that in real quick. And I'll definitely replace the uh, the Fortin. <laughs> yeah, that Fortin pedal, man. Ooh, that is a very specific pedal. That is a surgical tool made for certain types of surgeries, and this surgery does not require. I think, like you that said, it sounds all. good on a Mesa. It sounds good on an Orange. You yeah. know, looser amp. The way I'm running that Boss is I I dial the volume all the way up and then back it off just a hair. And then I keep the gain just south of, of nine o'clock. Okay. And then tone, tone to, at eleven to taste how I keep it at eleven. But. All right, let's try that. I got the gain. The drive is, it's barely on. It's probably just putting dust on top of it. So I yeah, I usually roll it up a little more. But yeah. okay, let's just see what we have, and I'll screw around with it. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's that's definitely a little better. It's way better than the 33. Yeah, the 33 is like hot dog water with this amp. So let's go back to the odd box because I'm still lacking some fullness, you know. 
So let's see what that does with it, and then, uh, you know, maybe I'll do a mix or something. <laughs> Yeah, for me, the Oddbox is definitely a good pedal with this amp, and the Super Overdrive is, is good as well. I do like that. Um, never use a Fortin 33. Uh, oddly enough, right? <laughs> Don't use the Fortin pedal with the Fortin amp, right? But, I mean, I know it wasn't really made for the Meshuga. I mean, I can tell this is more of a gent drop Z, low-tuned kind of thing. It's not super in my wheelhouse, but I can appreciate what it does for that kind of music. And really, that's really what it comes down to when you're uh, playing different pieces of gear. Some gear is very genre-specific, and especially when you're you know, making an amp for a specific guitar player in a specific genre. It even gets more specific, and I feel like that's what's happening with this amplifier. It's, it's very... It's a very surgical tool for a certain type of thing. I don't think that this amp would work for um, people that are like uh, in different kinds of music. You have to be almost a gent, a gent guy or somebody that's doing a lot of drop tuning stuff, and this amp would work perfectly for them guys, you know. Um, but guys like me, um, I can appreciate it for what it is, uh, but I... I would probably struggle a little bit with this amp, you know. Um, not saying I don't like it, it just, it's just, uh, it's, it's taken me a little bit to get used to it as well. And again, this is a first impressions video, so, um, but uh, it's it's really unique. And I got I to gotta tip my hat to them guys for making uh, a very unique amplifier. And the thing is, is what I like about it is... Uh, the fact that it is unique, I mean, I, I demo a lot of amps on the channel, and it's nice to run across something that's really different uh, from time to time, and this definitely is. Now, could I get used to it? I think over time I could probably get used to it. If I spent more time with it, I could definitely uh, probably find some better settings that work better for me and whatnot, but uh, um, it's definitely a, a very cool amp. And by the way, I'll post some uh, gut shots for you here. While I'm yammering, you can take a look at these gut shots. Um, and it's very impeccably made, really cool uh, gut shots here for you guys. So I hope you enjoy that. Yeah, a couple more riffs. I'm gonna dink around with it just for a couple more minutes and then, um, you know, maybe I'll do a mix or something to end the video. <laughs> Sounds good when I push the mids up a little bit. Have you tried cranking both gains all the way with the overdrive and the boost pulled out? Yeah, I could try that. Try. Yeah, let's give that a try. Yeah, just floor it. Okay, <laughs> just floor it. <laughs> yeah, because it's still plexi, which is a bit of, bit of a minimalistic gain-wise wise amplifier, but uh, this is like a super hot-rotted plexi, but it's got that same kind of plexi gain structure so maybe i do need to just crank everything so let's see what we have from what i know about you you like the mesa and the and the evh type of a sound a lot where i'm yeah. kind of more from the marshall school of things yeah, you yeah. know older plexis and jmps and, mm -hmm. and 800s so i think this is just way different than what you're used oh, to and it's that's why you're having different. trouble acclimating maybe yeah you know? it's super different i'm not saying it's not good it's just super it's different. different that's yeah. what i love about it man. i yeah. i that's honestly that's like i said earlier that's the thing i like about it too is that it is unique you know it's nice to have something unique in the studio from time to time other than you know the same old thing over and over again but maybe with a different voicing this is definitely the most unique amp i've ever played through there's nothing like it that i've ever played so I will give it that, um, and I can, with respect, I can see why people do like it, especially if you're a low-tune guy and you want that really nasty, like that snap on top of the, you know, the, the riffs and stuff, this amp will definitely give you that with lots of clarity and a, a lot of gain, but not sounding over-gained or oversaturated. It's almost like it's 
super sculpted gain so it's not overly saturated. It's weird. It's like I can't really put my finger on it. I can't like I don't have the vernacular to describe it, it you know what it is, but it's 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 very sculpted and very unique. Uh, yeah, let me mess with it a little, more, a little bit more. Let's uh, let's crank everything and see what we have. Yeah, I think I found a, a workable spot for me on, on the amplifier. So I did back off gain two a little bit. So we're about, you know, three o'clock there, but I cranked gain one and uh, the pull gain here on the master, I cranked that as well. And I got the master down a little bit or the, uh, the presence down a little bit, got the bass up a little more. And I found that for me anyways, the mids kind of filled it in a little, a little bit and uh, Got the treble there. So yeah, some pretty good settings here. Hopefully sounds good to you guys. I mean, the feel also is at play here. So I'm looking for a different feel. And I think that these settings actually helped out a, a lot with the feel. So with that, let's go ahead and do a uh, one take mix with the amplifier and see what we have. I'm gonna switch to another guitar, my purple one, which is a half step down. And we'll do a mix with that and see how it sounds there. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> one of the cables bumped my setting on my Phase 90 pedal, so that was fun. 
Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, that was, uh, seriously, this is the most unique amp I've ever played. I've never played anything like this in my life. Very, very different. And it's taken me a bit to get used to it, but uh, again, I can see why people like it. I mean, it's, it's uh, what do they make, only like 50 of these or something? 50, yeah. Wow. 50. This is number 43. Oh, really? Number 43. <clears throat> Wow, man. Yeah, it's it's actually, it's it's kind of an honor to play through this because, uh, I mean, how many people have played through one, right? I mean, really, really unique amplifier. And I like the blacked out version, you know, it's kind of badass looking. Um, so if you're into, I think, the gent stuff where you're, you're doing a lot of very intricate, uh, you know, riffs and uh, you, hot, heavily gated you know, tones and stuff like that. I think this amp would be really cool for you because it's got that spank to it that it really needs to um, accommodate the drop Z guitars, you know. And uh, I really think that it works really well for that. And that articulation that it has uh, really works for the gent stuff as well because it, it gives you that really fast attack, that spank on top, that articulation so that when you're doing like all the crazy stuff that gent players do, it all stands out really well, especially when you're in uh, lower tuned guitars. I mean, that really helps. And there's gain, but it's like a very unique gain structure in this amplifier. Very, very unique. And you're right. I mean, the description is pretty much perfect. I mean, you have, it's a plexi, but it's like super hot rotted, but not overly saturated either. It's just a meaner plexi. Super pissed off plexi, I think I would call this. So, yeah, very, very cool, very unique amplifier. Uh, glad I had a chance to play it for you guys and for myself. I mean, this has been really freaking cool. So I want to thank Jason for uh, bringing this over. I really appreciate it. And where can they find you on Instagram? Uh, I'm at Goldfinger Guitars on Instagram and uh, Reverb Store as well. Always buy and sell and trade and collecting. All right, cool, man. So yeah. look them up on Instagram. And, uh, you know, he's always got stuff up for sale and he might be buying something off you too. So he's constantly flipping amps. So yeah, pretty cool, man. And, uh, again, thanks so much for bringing this over. Uh, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have had a chance to try one of these out. So I really appreciate that very much. And guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And, uh, if you want to support my channel and the work that I do here, there's plenty of links below where you can do that. You can buy stuff at Sweetwater. Um, you can, uh, you know, buy some of my presets and profiles on my website, tonewars.com. And I do gear reviews for Motor City Guitar as well. So when I do those, look for the link uh, for that store as well when I do those. So I'd really appreciate that. So, uh, well, thanks to all my uh, Patreon supporters and subscribers. I really appreciate you guys very much. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And click the bell so that you can be notified every time I either go live or come out with a new episode. Well, I got a lot more stuff coming up for you guys, and I will see you on the next one.